everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I'm gonna to be showing you one thing you can do to make you a way better animator using MoGraph. So if you use the MoGraph module and uh, effectors, this one thing is gonna help you uh, really up your game at uh, really getting control of your animations when using MoGraph effectors. So let's get started. All right, so we are learning how to animate better using MoGraph. So I have three letters here, all made with Text Edge Pro here. I got a bend deform. We're kind of bending it so we get some really cool reflections going on. And uh, basically what, do I want, what I want to do is animate this with MoGraph, MoGraph Effectors. So let's grab all of these. I got the MoGraph Effectors tab here. Let's go ahead and, you know, your typical workflow is to get a plane effector, right? So we got our plane effector. Let me get out of interactive, interactive render region mode here. And we'll place our plane effector in our uh, Text Edge Pro objects here. So we got L, A, S, T, all with the sexy bevels on there. And let's go to our parameters here. So what I want to do is, uh, let's zero out the Y. Let's make it so our text kind of flies in from behind maybe 1500 uh maybe not that much maybe 1200 and let's scale stuff down negative one and uh but we rotate a little bit a little rotation across the nation 90 90 80 and uh now let's change the fall off here so let's go to something positive X and we have our X kind of tumbling in Whee! that's fun right so uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's see you want this to go the opposite way so we'll go negative X and we'll have it right on like that so now of course this is how we all have been doing it we'll just set some keyframes for the uh, X and I'm really picky about even numbers. I don't like the decimal points. I don't know. I'm just really, really just control freak about that. So I'm going to do negative 150. Let's go to frame 45. Drag our fall off over. And let's go to nice even round 600 centimeters. Now, let me just trim down my timeline to 45. We have text. Woo! And it's tumbling in and uh, kind of looks like garbage, right? Doesn't look very fun. So this is when, this is your, this is the time where you would then just add a delay effector, uh, which I like to call the sexy button, sexy effector. And you just apply the delay effector to everything and you have everything popping in or blending in really nice. And uh, you know, you. The only thing you do is kind of control the strength of that, or you can have it spring. Uh, and again, you're even, uh, you're just limited to the strength here. But what if I want way more control over how this tumbles in? Uh, so basically, what I want to do is have, have control like you normally would, just keyframing anything else and have your plain old animation curves and, and get overshoot that way and all that good stuff. So let me actually... We're gonna get rid of the sexy delay effector. And we're gonna go and uh, we've got our plane effector and only our plane effector. And I wanna get this kind of like bouncy overshoot kind of thing, right? So what I'm gonna do is go into my parameters, uh, or actually no, go into my fall off. And uh, stop me if you've actually done this before, but has anyone ever played around with this Spline field here. I've never touched it, right? Never touched it at all. But I tell you what, uh, if you want to uh, have a lot more control over your MoGraph effector animation, you want to learn how to use this sucker pretty well. So uh, basically to get started, uh, we're going to use a spline to kind of create animation curves like you typically would in your, in your timeline. So to start out, I'm just going to command click and make two points. And uh, let me bring up my timeline here. And 
option right here. So we got we got it going 45 frames, and that's good for now. And uh, let's actually get rid of uh, we got some ease in keyframes. So let's just uh, make them linear. So we don't want so no ease in ease out. So it's a constant velocity going from left to right here. And uh, now we can actually use this line. And you can see that uh, one of the things you have to understand is uh, this goes backwards for whatever reason. So you see I have this ease in, but it's kind of easing in upside down and kind of flipped. I don't know why that is. And actually, you know, you can actually see on the, uh, on the fall off that we're actually moving backwards. The arrow is pointing to the left. So this is kind of how this curve is going is we're starting at the zero scale and then kind of easing into the original position. So the, the effect of the plane effector is fading off. So right when it goes down to zero. So now what we can do is let's, let's keep hitting, let's keep playing. We're going to go over here and it's going to get cut off at the bottom here, but show in separate window. It's cut off, but it's the very bottom thing. I'm going to show the spline window in a separate window. And now we got, look at all this room, all that breathing room. We can stretch out, take your feet, pick your feet up and start moving around here. So now we can just use this as a, like a typical animation curve. So we got this really nice smooth ease in right now. We can kind of, make this very sharp so it really is like a sharp curve and then really has a lot of ease in. Uh, so right now I'm just, you know, this is just adjusting the animation curve of how our plane effector is, our plane effector strength is going across our object here. So now the fun part is, is we can, you know, add other points here by command clicking on the spline path and just start adjusting stuff. And now we have this little overshoot, this little bounce. And again, we can adjust this by adjusting our curve. So this is exactly like how you would keyframe uh, an overshoot in your timeline. But now you're doing it for your effector. So again, we can add another point and just kind of have this kind of, you know, we're kind of recreating how a delay effector with spring would kind of work, only we have a lot more control. So, you know, say this is going way too fast. Uh, one of the things we can do is either adjust the smoothness of the fall off or how big our fall off is or um so that's kind of more smooth we got that nice little springiness going on or we can bring up our uh, our timeline and then just stretch out how uh like the time it takes for the fall off to pass through all those letters so let's go to maybe 65 frames here and let's adjust our timeline there you go. Now we have like a much more smooth uh, springiness kind of thing going on. So again, this is exactly like keyframing overshoot on a, a on a typical object, right? So hopefully, I mean, I, I have never used this before. Never, ever, ever used the spline editor. But I tell you what, just using the spline editor gives you total, total control over your uh, how your strength of your effectors uh, are being applied. So we got this really nice springy thing going on. Really cool, right? Or we can have this kind of ease in at the at the start. Maybe move this over. Have more of a sharp springy. We need some cool sound effects. And then again, we can just change the. Uh, we can just change the fall off as well, and this will work with uh, any kind of fall off shape. So maybe if we want to, uh, let's get rid of the position here, and let's go instead of linear, let's go to uh, ba -ba -ba, sphere. Sphere is fun, and we'll just center that, and we'll control it with the scale. And again, we're going to need to invert this. So we need to scale it up. So we have the middle letters first. And you can see that our spline, uh, our spline animation is intact. Of course, because we didn't change anything. Change the fall off shape. So we are, uh, let's do scale of a thousand and keyframe that. So we got a thousand. Let's go to maybe frame 45. Go to frame zero. Scale this 
all the way down to say 50, I think 55, you won't be able to see anything. Let's just make sure. Yep, nothing renders, everything's still scaled down. And then uh, again, let's go into our timeline. And we're, again, we're gonna have that ease in, ease out, automatic stuff going on. Linearize, linearize that and hit play. We got that really nice bouncy stuff going on. Again, we can adjust the fall off. We can make that even sharper. So basically the fall off, however big your fall off is, kind of smooths out the uh, timing of this curve, line curve. So that's pretty cool. I'm liking that. Uh, and this spline animation stuff, I've played around with it a little bit. You can see that it just kind of junks everything up. I'm not quite sure uh, what that does. Or this clamped. Uh, typically, you would think that if you unclamp this, you can get even higher uh, here on the uh, spline curve. So if I uh, just open this in a separate window, the one thing that kind of stinks is you can't... Like right now, I'm trying to move this point further down. And uh, it's clamped. So uh, you would think that, okay, I can just unclamp that and then move this up, but uh, it's not working. In fact, it's kind of screwing everything up. So I just like to keep that clamped and uh, play around with your animation curves. And if you want to make it uh, past the uh, zero here, you just have to make your uh, spline, your Bezier uh, handle, a little bit longer so now it's really slamming for the camera towards the camera so uh more control over the animations you know i say this with uh when you're animating when you just apply uh ease in ease out keyframes just the stock stuff like us as animators we're used to seeing that that's a stock like pre-packaged kind of animation and uh, it's very boring. It's, it's something we're used to. And when we see something we're used to, we're not excited about it. But, you know, just uh, adjusting those ease and out curves just a little bit, just those handles, just a tiny bit, just to switch things up can make a huge difference and, and turn a somewhat boring animation into a kind of, you know, fun, interesting animation. And same thing with this, uh, the spline options here on the... Uh, on your effectors, like we've all seen what the springy delay effector thing does. We've all seen the blend, you know, we've all seen that done. Uh, but when you have something like this, where you have more full control, you can have, you know, we can even add another point in here and have like a, a lot more resonance. That's really the word to use, but we have more of a spring. So we can recreate our spring and have full control over how our spring looks. Uh, by just traditional animation. And I tell you what, if you, <laughs> you're like me, I kind of used the delay effector uh, as a crutch for a very long time. And, uh, you know, just in this past year, I've been like, you know, I, need, I really need to learn how to animate uh, properly in, in traditional animation and, and keyframes and stuff like that. And I tell you what, don't, don't use stuff as crutches to overcome the fact that you might not be good at animation because the more you understand about animation, the better... Uh, animator you're going to be and uh, you know the more you can kind of consider yourself the crafter of keyframes instead of just a person who hits the sexy delay button uh, delay delay effector button to make uh, animations all nice so uh, hopefully you guys will if you haven't used this before you use it a lot more take fuller control over your MoGraph uh, animations and uh, that'll be it for me. So everyone, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.